to uh, India stack, uh, the fundamental building block which uh, has helped us to sort of, you know, take this journey forward. <coughs> so I am from uh, Digiandra Foundation and uh, uh, we are a not-for-profit company which is uh, having shareholders, uh, uh, Airports Authority of India with 26% shareholding and uh, <coughs> the remaining 74% uh, uh, divided equally between five public-private partnership airports. Uh, so we are not here to make profit. Uh, the only motto that we have is uh, to ensure that you know passengers go through uh, the airport processes in a completely frictionless manner. Possibility uh, to uh, to make the passenger journey at airports uh, completely seamless, uh, and we started thinking that okay, what can we do? And uh, uh, here is where you know uh, we were in a uh, workshop. Uh, and uh, we were thinking of okay, what could be the new uh, journey that we can define for passengers. Uh, and people began to write various stories about you know what will happen, how passengers will go through the airport checkpoints, etc. Uh, and this is where we started to think a little bit differently and said that you know how about the journey where you know nobody stops the passenger? How about the journey where passenger just goes through all the checkpoints without being stopped, asked for documents, etc., etc. And that's where the whole journey began and we began to sort of, you know, take this concept forward uh, thinking about, you know, ways to make it happen. And at that time, uh, phase biometrics uh, was just doing the rounds, this was in 2015 and uh, we started to think that, okay, this could be one way where we can uh, leverage uh, this technology and enable this journey. Uh, and uh, one of the thoughts was uh, to make it like a walk in the park uh, experience for passengers. Uh, and then of course uh, we started the journey and I will just quickly go through uh, the whole journey of uh, how we made it happen. Uh, we were interested in uh, also leveraging data so that uh, all these stakeholders who enable the passenger's journey are able to uh, use data uh, and bring in more meaningful in interventions into the passenger's journey. Uh, and this is possible with this whole ecosystem that we have built. Uh, so this is the journey, it's a very busy slide, I'm sorry about this. Uh, but from 2015-16 when we started the concept, working with various stakeholders uh, to see how we can uh, make a lane for uh, passenger processing, uh, people started to ask us, okay, why don't you scale this up across uh, you know, the airport and also airports across India. And uh, this is when we felt that you know, this has got something really big, potential. Uh, we called the ministry and uh, uh, we had the ministry folks, regulatory authorities visiting us. Uh, I was like every time you know getting into the suit and then going back <laughs> to uh, to give a demo to uh, the uh, the ministry folks uh, and the regulatory authorities and it was a busy very hectic sort of a uh, time that we had uh, but ultimately you know we had real good support from uh, the Ministry of Civil Aviation uh, and with that support uh, we started to take that journey forward. Uh, they were of the view that you know this should become the process uh, across. Uh, across airports in India. And for that to happen, it was no longer one airports project. We had to bring all the airports together. So we started to think of what could be the organization structure. Uh, you start your enrollment from your home. Uh, and this is something which you can do on your phone. And maybe at, the, at this time, this is the right time to ask, how many of you have got uh, uh, DigiAtra app on your phone? So almost 50%. And how many of you have experienced DigiAtra at airports? almost 50%. So I think it's a good uh, uh, feeling that I get that you know this is the way forward and as more and more airports you know uh, adopt this ecosystem uh, this is going to be like you know I would say reach around 60 to 70 percent of uh, adoption at airports across India. Uh, so we start with uh, uh, an app which you have to download from iOS uh, uh, app store or uh, from your play store and then you start your enrollment process. We are connected to DigiLocker and you can also upload your uh, offline Aadhaar. Uh, and uh, there is a selfie that you need to take. Uh, the selfie is matched with your Aadhaar uh, face and once the match is successful, your identity credential is created. And this is that identity credential which you know uh, is important for you to go through uh, the airport entry gate. And today if you see there is this, you can see you know uh, people at the airport entry gate, uh, they have to show either their phone or their uh, pickup printed ticket uh, and if it is the phone, it becomes even more cumbersome. The CSF staff is zooming in to find the name and all that, uh, find the name on the uh, travel document, find the name on the identity card. 
look at the face on, on the identity card, look at the face uh, standing in front of you. I think these are the th uh, things that we want to avoid and that's something which gets uh, you know taken care of by that identity credential. So once you do that identity credential, uh, you can also upload health credentials. Uh, for now, of course, there is uh, no requirement, so we have not enabled it now. Uh, and after that, whenever you travel, you just upload your boarding pass and uh, you share it with the airport of origin. Uh, the data gets sent, uh, you have the, uh, the name uh, which has been matched with the boarding pass, you got the uh, single token face parameter. Uh, and of course, the PNR data, your travel data. Uh, so that goes, gets sent to uh, the airports and when you are at the airport, uh, scan your boarding card and uh, your record is pulled out and then your face is matched, the live face with the face which you had shared. Uh, so that's what happens. Uh, we will also be bringing in uh, an exception management process where in case your face did not match while doing your uh, registration, uh, we will enable you to do it at the airport registration kiosk itself. Uh, but that is not yet rolled out uh, and after that as I mentioned from the entry gate to the boarding gate it's going to be a seamless walkthrough. Today you have seen gates and uh, the eventual vision that we have is there will be no gates, there will be no barriers. You just enter into the airport. Uh, at the back end there is that heavy lifting which is happening where uh, we have cameras which basically have uh, validated your identity and your uh, uh, travel document as well. And only exceptions will be managed rather than you know you going through a gate which opens and stuff like that. Uh, so this is the vision and uh, if you see the second last column, uh, we have departure immigrations and departure immigrations is something which we will be uh, talking about in the last slide uh, where we have to work with the Bureau of Immigration and uh, bring this process also so that international flights also can get processed uh, in the same way. Uh, so we crossed 1 million uh, users and incidentally in Android itself we crossed 1 million users. Uh, we have got Apple which uh, is uh, 169 uh, as of 169,000 uh, users as of now <coughs> and more than uh, 2 million passengers have actually used uh, DigiAthra at various airports where it is rolled out. Uh, brief about <coughs> how this whole concept works and uh, if you see here uh, on this block is where your government IDs are uh, and uh, you see the passenger in the center, passenger owning the data uh, and then on the other side you see all the verifiers who need to validate your uh, identity credentials. Uh, on this side is Digiatra Central Ecosystem which issues credentials. Uh, so the whole ecosystem is built on W3C standards uh, uh, and uses self-sovereign identity. Meaning that you know you as a passenger are empowered to control your data. To whom you are sharing the data, when are you sharing the data, what is the data that is being shared is all under your control. And this is data minimalization as well. Uh, and the whole ecosystem is privacy preserving because this blockchain distributed ledger that, you do, uh, that we use, uh, which is Hyperledger Aries, uh, does not have any personally identifiable information. All the information is stored in your phone only. You share it to airports. We only ensure that you know there is no data tampering that happens uh, and that's with the help of a signature that we leave on the uh, credential. <coughs> so from that perspective it is completely privacy by design. This is first of its concept which has been uh, sort of rolled out uh, at this larger scale. And of course I'll, I'll also uh, want some questions coming from you so maybe let me just continue <coughs> the presentation quickly. We've got six more minutes. Uh, so this is just a brief outlay of how it works, uh, the whole ecosystem uh, with the issuer, uh, the Jeta Central Ecosystem uh, connected to uh, a face mat matching engine uh, and we use uh, Hyperledger Aries uh, framework. Uh, the passenger app obviously has connections to uh, DigiLocker from where the uh, credentials are uh, obtained. Uh, we also have connectivity to the COVID uh, health data. Uh, the first registration we use AWS Cognito where you get your first SMS uh, and then we have the airport verifier cloud where all the data is shared by you and subsequently uh, what you see here is the airport local node. Uh, so data gets sent directly from the passenger to this node and then comes down to various airports uh, based on your travel data.
Uh, and this is what I was talking about, right? Uh, so we do not hold any personally identifiable. So the layer that you see here, uh, this blockchain, we do not store any personally identifiable information at all. Uh, everything is stored in the passenger's wallet itself. So all the data, your identity credential, your health credential maybe, uh, your travel credentials, all this data is there in your wallet. Uh, we issue a document with a signature and then the holder directly shares it with airports and other uh, you know entities. So completely privacy by design, passenger is completely in charge and in control of all the data that is being sort of you know shared. Uh, so with whom the data is being shared, passenger knows what is that data which is being shared. So for example if you take at the airport entry gate, your uh, name, your PNR data and your face, these are the three things that need to be known. We don't need to give the complete Aadhaar data, right? Uh, so, data minimalization and also when it is shared, for how long it is shared, everything is sort of in the control of passengers. So, in conclusion, of course, uh, I think we spoke about this a lot. Uh, uh, but the main intent here is uh, to make this as the travel stack of India. Uh, so, when I say travel stack of India, so airport process is not just the process that we would want to sort of, you know, uh, bring convenience to. Uh, you do not end your journey at the airport, right? You go check into a hotel and when you check into a hotel, what happens? You are asked, okay, show me your passport, show me your Aadhaar card and there is this lady who will take a photo of your uh, Aadhaar card and the Aadhaar card has got your phone number, your father's name, <laughs> all your data and this data is now on somebody's tablet or uh, maybe somebody has taken a copy of that. You are putting all your data at risk. Uh, so we want to enable that also with a with Digiatra. So your identity credentials can be used for your validation, identity validation at hotel as well. And similarly, I was uh, at uh, DLF Cyber City entering into one of the towers, and there also it's the same thing. You go there, and then they thrust that tablet in your face, say that okay, punch in your name, punch in your phone number, also type in your address. And then once you have done that, they say, okay, now this address proof, you show me an ID card which is having this address. Uh, and then they take a photo of that. So, it's a cumbersome process. So, we want to bring convenience to that. And that's the uh, whole uh, you know, roadmap that we are trying to build here. And uh, my last slide, uh, we still have two and a half minutes more. So, basically, uh, future of Digiatra. So, today we start with, say, domestic travel only. But where do we want this to go? Uh, we obviously want you to have a seamless, uh, you know, uh, departure immigration. So today also, if you see, there are many airports in India who are struggling to manage passenger flow at the uh, departure immigration. And the same goes with arrival immigration, uh, which is in India. But then, of course, if you are traveling from, say, uh, Bangalore to, say, London, uh, when you land at Heathrow Airport, again, there will be a queue. Uh, and all that is something which we want to sort of, you know, uh, avoid and uh, bring in this convenience. So you are able to share credentials to the origin airport, you are also able to share credentials to the uh, destination airport. And when you reach the destination, after a 10 hours long journey, uh, you will be going through a much more seamless process through the automated border control. Uh, because you have already shared your data, they already know that you are going to be there and then you can actually go through a much more seamless process. And as I was mentioning, uh, hotel identity validation, uh, other areas like even for example, there are various tour operators where you know identity is certainly required. Uh, all those places you will be able to use Digiatra. So that is uh, uh, what we have as our roadmap. And uh, that's it from my side. Thank you so much, and I'll pause here for questions.